Hello everyone, my name is Preston Dennett and welcome to a new episode of UFOs and the Paranormal. I call this episode ET Heart Healings. According to the Center for Disease Control and the World Health Organization, heart disease is the single leading cause of death on this planet. In fact, nearly a million people die each year and one in four deaths on earth are directly attributable to some form of heart disease. So this is a huge problem, and it should come as no surprise that there are quite a few cases in which people claim to have been healed of their heart disease by extraterrestrials. So that's what this episode is about today. I think these cases are not only interesting, but very important because they show a benevolent side to ET contact that is often overlooked. It shows how these cases are universal, coming from all across the world. ETs display no prejudice on who, who they're healing. The healings occur to men, women, and children. These cases also show how truly advanced the ETs are and reinforces their agenda of healing. So that's why I wanted to do this video today. I have nearly a dozen cases of ET heart healings and they stretch some years back in time all the way to the present day. And the first case I'd like to talk about comes from a researcher by the name of Linisa who is part of the UFO organization called the UFOCCI. And she reports a very interesting heart healing case that comes from Los Angeles, California. And I'll just quote Lenisa directly. As she says, A lady that lives in Los Angeles told about an experience she had when she was 12 years old. This is around the 1960s. As Lenisa says, she was born with a congenital heart defect. One side of her heart was huge and the other small. Her brother had died from the same condition. The doctors insisted she have open heart surgery to correct the condition. And one night she had a dream that a man came to her and did something to her chest to the point that she felt like he was crushing her. The next morning she woke up with such pain she was rushed to the hospital. But when she was x-rayed, the heart was healed and totally normal. So while it's hard to say that this is actually a ET doing this, she later had some confirmation that it probably was because she went some years later to the chiropractor who found surgical scars on her body. So she had been operated on. The, the chiropractor was certain of it. However, the witness said she had never been to the hospital for surgery. And that's just one case. There are many others. A second case comes from a very famous Russian UFO contactee by the name of Viktor Kostroykin. Viktor became interested in UFOs in August of 1962 when he saw a UFO over the Caucasus mountain range in Russia. It impressed him enough that he started bringing groups of people to this area specifically to view UFOs and discouraged that people were not taking these UFOs seriously. He began going out on his own and trying to call them down and he was remarkably successful and in fact had direct contact. On the evening of July 7, 1968, he was hiking near the Shigem Gorge. This is an area of high UFO activity in Russia when he saw a very bright unidentified flying object descend near a hill. And he quickly ran to this area and saw a large disc landed on the ground and next to it there was a figure, very tall, dressed in silver overalls and it was gesturing for Victor to approach and enter the craft, which he did. And inside, Victor saw advanced computer-like equipment, he said, and furniture that was melded directly with the walls and floor. He saw other humanoid fig figures aboard the craft, each of them very much similar to each other, so much alike that they looked like twins, even. 
which is commonly reported among contactees. And at one point during this long and complicated encounter, Victor was approached by a figure wearing a strange pair of elbow-length black gloves. And this figure proceeded to thrust his gloved hand directly into Victor's chest, right through his shirt and skin and everything. And as Victor says, I did not feel any pain or other sensations, at least not at first. At some point, Victor felt this hand reach the area of his heart. And at this point, he did start to feel a strange pain, and he screamed. This figure withdrew his hand, and Victor says that he experienced many other bizarre episodes during this experience and then was finally released from this object. Uh, he was now several miles from where he had been picked up. What's very interesting about this case and significant here is before this encounter, Victor Kostroykin was suffering from a heart defect, a congenital heart defect that he'd lived with his entire life. However, following this experience, he was healed. His heart defect was no longer there. And he did report a number of other changes. After the encounter, he had several instances of what he believes is telepathy. Uh, it was so pronounced that he had difficulty being in crowds. He also experienced other paranormal phenomena, such as telekinesis, precognition of disasters, and also felt that he had gained the ability to heal other people himself. This is a very common symptom of UFO contact. It's quite an interesting case. And now we move to yet another case, and there's, there are quite a few of them. It's really remarkable. Another case comes from UFO researcher Barbara Lamb, a well-respected researcher who has counseled and interviewed hundreds, if not thousands, of UFO contactees. And one of them was a very interesting gentleman who she calls Harold. And throughout his life, Harold had dreams about aliens and experienced occasional episodes of missing time. However, it wasn't until his late 40s that he realized he was having ET contact. This is when he uh, reached out to Barbara Lamb and with the use of hypnotic regression recalled a lifetime of contact, including a series of healings on his heart which apparently began prior to his birth, while he was still in the womb of his mother. As Barbara Lamb writes, and I quote, While his mother was asleep one night, she was visited by a gray male being who placed his hands on her abdomen in the area of her womb where Harold was developing. The being said directly to him that his heart was defective, and that there was a hole in one chamber that would make it impossible for to him to live after he was born. This being also indicated that he was placing an invisible electromagnetic strip over the defect in Harold's heart in order that he would survive. The electromagnetic strip would be reinforced by him after Harold was born to keep his heart working properly. And this is exactly what happened. So this is something Harold recalled in his 40s. And uh, under hypnosis, he recalled being visited again when he was three years old. He recalled being actually taken on board, placed on a table, and examined by this ET who called himself Mazu. And this was the same being who had originally healed him in utero. And as Barbara Lamb writes, on this occasion, Mazu placed his hand over the little boy's chest, apparently reinforcing the electromagnetic strip. So under hypnotic regression, Harold learned that he had been abducted many times throughout his life, throughout the 1960s and 1970s. And during each experience, this ET by the name of Mazu would place his hands over Harold's chest to reinforce this energetic healing strip. And this was not the only uh, thing that happened during Harold's contact. Harold was also taught on a variety of topics, 
including how to pilot the UFO ships, how to meditate, how to perform telekinesis, and other things like this. When Harold reached the age of 48, uh, he had a contact experience with Mizzou, and Mizzou told him that he needed to go visit a heart surgeon on Earth and undergo surgery to repair the hole in his heart. So he followed Mazu's guidance and underwent heart surgery. He went to the heart doctors who were shocked uh, because they could not believe Harold was still alive and had this very pronounced hole in his heart. Harold's wife, who is a registered nurse, actually observed the operation. And as Barbara Lamb writes, she clearly observed the shock and confusion of the doctors upon viewing the silver dollar-sized hole in his heart. They estimated it had been there for many years, but for some inexplicable reason, it leaked very little blood. At the time of the surgery, the entire medical staff was amazed that Harold was alive. So there you go, another heart healing. And here's yet another, which comes from UFO researcher Alberto, Alberto Rosales, who wrote the multi-volume set, Humanoids Amongst Us. And this is a really interesting case because it involves a gentleman who was healed of a heart condition, and his wife, who was also present, was also cured. Uh, this occurred in 1977. The witness's name is Bernardo Vega, and he was undergoing treatment for his chronic cardiac problems at the Hospital Oncologico de Ponce in Ensenada, Puerto Rico. And on the evening of December 22, 1977, Bernardo Vega was at his home caring for his wife, who was very sick from the flu, apparently. She had been vomiting all evening and was quite weak. And during this evening, Bernardo stepped outside to clean out the bowl that his wife had been using. And as he washed this bowl, he saw three bright lights approaching. He first thought they were fireflies until they grew close, and he saw that they were quite large, very bright, and he fell to his knees in shock and fear as these lights descended directly onto his terrace right in front of him and transformed into three human figures, three males. He says they were neither ugly nor pretty. They were about three feet tall with short arms and legs and large hands. He says their faces were large with a big flat nose thick lips, and glowing eyes, and they each wore blue diver's suits. They began to speak to Bernardo in an unknown language at a very fast pace, and uh, he says as they stared into his eyes, he felt like they were reading his mind. And one of these figures turned to the other two and said, He is sick cure him. At this point, one of these men approached Bernardo, placed his fingers on his chest, and said, I am going to cure you. He moved his hand around, and Bernardo saw flashing lights. He felt nothing, but he did begin to sweat profusely. As he says, it was as if someone had emptied a bucket of water on me. His wife apparently uh, heard this, this activity and shouted out, Who are you talking to? And Bernardo told her to just please wait. <laughs> Something very important is happening. And at this point, the three men held each other's hands and told Bernardo, We need you. Goodbye. And the men then transformed into three orbs of light and flew away. The entire event lasted, Bernardo estimates, about 25 minutes. He ran inside and told his wife, who was quite impressed. He told his mother, who was very religious, and she thought it might have been an angelic visitation of some kind. But following this experience, 
Bernardo visited his doctors at the hospital, who were shocked to find that Bernardo had been inexplicably cured. Not only was his heart normal, but as they said, he, his heart was functioning like that of a young teenager. And this appears to have been a double healing because after this event, after these figures left, Bernardo's wife also very, very quickly recovered and uh, was no longer ill. So it's an interesting case, to say the least. And it's not the only one. Uh, there are many, many people who are experiencing these heart healings. Another comes from Russia. It occurred in 1985 to a lady by the name of Marina Lukonina. And this also comes from Albert, Alberto Rosales. And Marina was a resident of Obnix in the Kaluga region of Russia. And she was in her home when she was approached by very tall figures, seven foot tall aliens who said that they were from the constellation of Libra. This ship actually landed outside her home and Marina says she wasn't abducted but was rather invited on board. And they put her in this sort of armchair and transported her to their planet, which they called Sara. They spoke to her telepathically they told her they lived about 400 years. And on this other planet, she said she met other ETs, uh, some who, who were uh, much taller than seven feet, up to nine feet. And the ETs said that they were going to cure her. And they performed an energetic surgery, she said. And not only did they cure her of her heart disease, they trained her how to do energetic healings herself on other people. And she was returned to Earth and she became very involved in non-traditional psychic healing and performed a number of, quote, bloodless surgical procedures, telling her patients that these were the methods that she had been taught by the ETs. And apparently she was quite successful because she had a lot of patients and a number of positive testimonials attesting to the ability of her to heal. So there's that same pattern again and again. People are not only being healed, but are being taught how to heal. And another case uh, comes from an anonymous person uh, in the Crimea area of Ukraine. This involved a woman who was terminally ill with heart disease and was in her hospital room at the Curve Hospital. And on the evening of April 18, 1989, her hospital room filled with a strong wind, filled with a bright white light, and this man dressed all in white appeared. And he was glowing with white light. His eyes actually radiated light. And the patient asked this man who he was, where he had come from. And this figure said that he was from, quote, the 10th dimension. And told this patient that she would soon be cured. And then disappeared. And the very next day, outside witnesses observed unexplained red and white lights moving over the body of the patient in her hospital room and they heard a loud voice telling her to quote get up and leave and the woman rose from her hospital bed and she was no longer weak she was no longer struggling for breath and in fact she was completely healthy this case was presented by russian researcher sergey bulantsev and it appeared in the ufo magazine ufo universe and also in Alberto Rosali's book, Humanoids Amongst Us. It's one of many cases in which people have been healed in a hospital room. Another very interesting case comes from a well-known contactee by the name of Katerina Wilson, who wrote a book called The Alien 
jigsaw. She's had a lifetime of contact and also had a very interesting heart healing. She was in Florida when she was actually struck by lightning. As it turns out, your chances of being struck by lightning are very small. In fact, you're probably more likely to be abducted by aliens. But in Katerina's case, she experienced both. She was struck by lightning, stumbled into her house, and was going to call the hospital. But before she could, ETs appeared and abducted her and told her flat out that she had been injured by this lightning strike and they would heal her. So she was quite disoriented, quite afraid. She woke up on this UFO lying on this table and she was suffering from excruciating chest pains. And as she watched, gray type aliens cut a square into her chest and attached a black mechanism, a tool-like device with several extensions to this hole in her chest. And the pain was very intense and the ETs told her, we are repairing your heart. You will be okay now. And the next morning, Katerina woke up and her chest was quite sore, but she felt otherwise fine. And as she says, and I quote, the first thing I did when I got out of bed was to look for a scar of a square cut into my chest. I found nothing, no blood on my sheets and no scar. My chest was sore throughout the day, but it was not as sore as I would have expected it to feel after such a radical operation. I believe this machine they had over my heart was realigning the electrochemical impulses in my heart because they had been altered by the lightning. Somehow, I believe the aliens were repairing the damage the high voltage of the lightning had done to my heart. Katerina not only wrote the book The Alien Jigsaw and a couple of follow-up books, she did appear on Art Bell's radio program where she talked about how ETs had not only healed her but were healing other people and that ETs are not something we should be afraid of although it can be quite frightening. Another case comes from German researcher Michael Hesseman. He's quite prominent in this field. And this case occurred sometime in the 1980s. The exact date is not given, but it occurred to an anonymous factory worker in Georgia, Russia, who woke up with severe chest pains and shortness of breath. He had recently suffered two consecutive heart attacks and he instantly recognized the symptoms of a third heart attack. And he had been told that his chances of survival were not good if he were to have another heart episode. So he was quite frightened and was getting ready to call the hospi hospital. But before he could take any action, he found himself surrounded by gray ETs. And the aliens took this ball of light and put it inside the man's chest and he was telepathically told that he was healed and that they would like him to paint his experience. While he was a factory worker he was apparently also an artist. At this point the man fell asleep and when he woke up the next morning he felt no pain and was apparently healed and he immediately prepared to make a painting of these beings and following this experience he was perfectly healthy and was able to take daily marathon runs through Gorky Park. And according to Michael Hesseman, he has investigated several healing accounts in this particular area of Russia. And he says that unlike other areas where people fear ETs, uh, in Georgia, Russia, people look at the ETs as friends and are eager to be taken on board. One of my favorite cases of this kind comes from researcher John Mack, MD, who wrote the book Abduction. He was one of the first academics to write about UFOs and study the UFO abduction phenomena and had a very positive outlook on this subject and he interviewed a man by the name of Edward Carlos, who was in fact healed. 
Edward Carlos was a fine arts professor in Pennsylvania and had UFO encounters his entire life. And in fact, in 1942, at age five, Edward Carlos was healed of pneumonia by the ETs. But it was many years later, on April 15, 1990, and Edward was visiting the island of Iona between Scotland and Ireland when he saw this unexplained beam of light coming down from the clouds. And this beam of light struck Edward Carlos and he experienced missing time. So he had had this sort of experience before. Sometimes he had missing time. Sometimes he remembered consciously being taken on board. But unable to remember what happened during this missing time, he went to visit John Mack and underwent hypnotic regression. And under hypnosis, he recalled being examined by several entities, including a reptilian-like humanoid, small white-skinned humanoids, and an insect-like robotic creature. He said he had the typical anal probe and the ETs told him this was to uh, determine the state of his health. As Edward Carlos says, and I quote, they are clarifying that the inside of me is okay. They are operating on me. They are looking to see if anything is not right. The process can be healing. So the ETs continued to examine Edward Carlos thoroughly, including his heart. And uh, they said that his heart needed work. Apparently there was some blockages there. They used this laser-like instrument to clear his arteries of blockage. As Edward Carlos says, they can cause the change with their laser-like instruments. In my heart, I feel extreme heat. I think it is healing something, clearing arteries or something. Uh, Carlos said that he has been healed uh, more than once, not only of pneumonia and apparently arterial sclerosis, but a possible cancer cure. Uh, he feels that his encounters are positive and transformative. As he says, you are diseased and then you are healed. With each healing, the emotional growth is established and connected in the human realm. And I can go and utilize that toward teaching others. And here is another case which comes from the area of Georgia, Russia, specifically from the town of Tbilisi. And according to researcher Helga Morrow, uh, there are many, many healings taking place in this city. And she had the opportunity to view a rare 1993 UFO documentary from Russia which presented many of these cases. And as Helga Morrow says, and I quote, After almost six hours of studying this film carefully, I feel it's the most outstanding first-hand information about extraterrestrials ever to be filmed anywhere in the world. And apparently this film recounts several cases of people who were healed, including this following brief report. As Helga Morrow writes, The shaven stomach of a man shows a slight scar. He was permanently and painlessly cured of a heart condition. And here's yet another case from Russia. And this occurred to a gentleman by the name of Igor Nikolaevich Petukov. And in the summer of 1998, Igor, who was a farmer from uh, Russia, was working in the fields when he heard a strange sound coming from above him. And this light came um, down. It descended and landed behind his shed. So he started to walk towards this shed when suddenly a small humanoid dressed in a tight-fitting black uniform flew up from behind the shed and approached Igor. And this farmer found himself unable to move. The ET hovered in front of him and he saw that it was a short figure with dark eyes a tiny little nose, and a slit-like mouth. This figure said nothing, but flew up and down in front of Igor. He was afraid at first, but it became clear to him that there was no harm being put towards him, 
And this figure hovered in front of him for a full 15 minutes, which is a long time, and then flew off. And the very next day, he saw the same figure again walking around in the backyard. And uh, this figure looked directly at him but said nothing. It returned again on a third day, this time hovering above the porch and looking inside the house as if looking for Igor. And as soon as he saw this figure, it flew away and was never seen again. But following these three encounters, Igor, who suffered from chronic heart disease, said that he had experienced a dramatic improvement in his health. And in fact, it was so dramatic, he went to the doctor and the doctor verified that his chronic heart disease was pretty much gone. And this was also verified by Igor's family, who now could see that Igor was healthy. So there you go, more and more cases. Here is yet another case, which involves actually two healings. Uh, a lady by the name of Mary uh, from Ontario, Canada, had suffered from a heart murmur her entire life. This was a condition that ran in her family. Uh, this case actually comes from Canadian researcher Grant Cameron. And uh, this lady, Mary, not only suffered from a heart murmur, she suffered from infertility, and her doctors told her she would never be able to have children. But that all changed. On January 7, 2003, Mary was traveling with a friend and a 12-year-old child along a road in northern Ontario when this UFO showed up. It began when the, they noticed that the highway around them was empty of any other vehicles, and shortly after this, they noticed that they were being paced by a not only one UFO, two. Two UFOs were following them on either side of their car. And the child was so frightened by this that she climbed out of the back seat and sat between the two adults in the front seat. And these objects followed these three people for a half an hour. And finally, at some point, fell back and uh, turned on their lights, raced forward, and began buzzing the car at very low altitudes. Uh, this frightened the three witnesses who quickly sped away leaving the UFOs behind. Now later, Mary would have other encounters, and she was apparently healed, because as Grant Cameron writes, and I quote, the woman who could not bear children just had her fifth child, and the lifelong heart condition is a thing of the past. So there are many cases. Here's yet another that I investigated personally involving a woman from Maine. I call her Lynette. She's had a lifelong series of encounters. Uh, she was once healed of a lung condition. She had a cyst in her lung, and doctors were planning on removing one-third of her lungs, and that's when ETs healed her. But she also experienced a healing of her heart. She was taken on board. This was around 2011. And uh, this gray showed up and said that she had a problem with her heart. Lynette was not aware of this, and she could not believe what happened next. And I'll just quote Lynette directly. As she says, this E.T., I quote, plunged his hand into my chest like nothing was solid. It hurt. I could feel pain. I first thought he had something in his hands but I don't know if he did or not. I couldn't see. I just saw the hand going in beyond the fingers, almost to the thumb, and I hurt. I almost felt like I was burning. And he said, your heart is physically and spiritually healed. So there you go. This is another case in which ETs are healing people, not with instruments necessarily, as is in some cases, but just by plunging their hands directly into a person's chest. It's quite strange, uh, but apparently is a method that's used fairly regularly. Because as we have seen, it's not the only one, and there are others. Here's another case that's very similar. 
This occurred to a gentleman who prefers to remain anonymous. I'll call him Steve. And this was in Manchester, New Jersey. On June 9, 2013, Steve woke up suddenly. Uh, he was a light sleeper, and he often woke up in the middle of the night. But on this particular occasion, he was startled to see someone standing next to his bed, someone that he described as a tall, thin, glowing, white humanoid. And as Steve says, and I quote, with no sound, the being reached into my left chest area. I didn't feel any pain, pressure, or discomfort. This lasted about five minutes. The being removed its hand from my left chest and stood there for about two minutes and then vanished. So Steve was amazed and confused. He was absolutely baffled as to what had just happened. He'd never seen a UFO, just this one humanoid and he felt physically fine, but he really began to wonder why this ET had plunged its hands into his chest, and he began to have a very strong intuitive urge, he said, which was so overwhelming, he went to a cardiologist. And this was just a few months after this experience. He went and got an EKG and a stress test, and the doctors told him that they were absolutely shocked he had a very severe health condition and was actually lucky to still be alive. They told him he had arrived at the hospital just in time. They told him that he had been born with a bicuspid aorta valve when it should have been tricuspid. And not only that, not only did he have a heart defect, he was suffering from severe congestive heart failure. As Stephen says, so I was rushed to the hospital to prep me for a triple bypass and a replacement aorta valve. The doctors joked to him that he was getting a two-for-one operation, a bypass, and a valve replacement. And as Steve says, My take, my feelings on this incident, was the white light being made temporary repairs for me to not have a heart attack or stroke ahead of time. It was a miracle. This white light being made adjustments to give me the time and the strong intuition to get into a hospital to save my life. So there you go. More than a dozen cases of people who believe their heart was healed by extraterrestrials. I love these cases because, as I said, they show a benevolent side to ET contact. I presented them in my book, The Healing Power of UFOs, 300 True Cases. And I think these cases reinforce the fact that healing is a major ET agenda. And they teach us quite a bit about the ETs, that they are friendly, that they heal people all over the world, that they're extremely advanced, that their abilities to heal include conditions that we would consider chronic. And what's really interesting is that they're not only technologically advanced, but are apparently spiritually advanced because we see them healing using mind power or directly sticking their hands into a person's body, somewhat akin to the manner of psychic healing we do here on Earth. So that may sound unusual, but the cases are consistent in this regard and uh, really interesting in that there are people of all types being healed all across the U.S. and the world involving men, women, and children. I think these cases are very important and show, again, that healing is a major part of ET contact. And that's why I wanted to do this episode for you today. And I really want to thank you once again for watching. I really appreciate it. And until next time, keep asking questions and keep having fun.